Lately, the horror genre has gotten a bit repetitive, with the growing success of the Conjuring series and its subsequent cinematic universe and the low-budget, high-quality movies made by Blumhouse, there is no shortage of content for the horror fans. But still, most of the time, we get an average movie about a ghost or a demon or a creature who will terrify a small group of people within a confined space, most likely a haunted house. For a quick adrenaline rush, a small dose of these will do. Play one of these movies or shows, get some of your friends and grab some popcorn, just wait for long moments of silence and then BAM! LOUD NOISES! We can easily kill an evening just like that. But not always a horror movie or show leaves an impression with you long after you finished watching it. Netflix's The Haunting of Hill House is such a gem. With a second standalone season titled The Haunting of Bly Manor is on the way, let's see how this one is special. If you end up liking this video, please consider subscribing to the channel. Loosely based on the 1959 novel of the same name, written by Shirley Jackson, this series is adapted for television by Mike Flanagan, who has already made such horror hits like Oculus, Hush, VG Origin of Evil, and most recently, Doctor Sleep, a sequel to the Kubrick classic The Shining. When I say loosely based on, I really mean it because Shirley Jackson's novel has already been adapted into visual format twice. Disclaimer, please don't turn away now, the series is nothing like the 1999 version. The series follows the Crane family, especially the five siblings, Stephen, Shirley, Theodora, and the twins, Eleanor and Luke. Set between two timelines, the series explores the haunting events occurred to them in Hill House when they were younger and how the scars of which still left burning on their adult selves. The Haunting of Hill House is basically an emotional, character-centric family drama nicely wrapped in a coat of horror. Unlike the modern horror movies and shows, the focus is more on the characters and not the demon. If we examine the first five episodes, they are told from the perspective of each of the five siblings and deals with almost the same set of events. But this let us audience know more about these characters and relationships between each of them. Along with that, a mystery is presented which will keep us in our toes. Each point of view gives a new level to the same story told and by the time we reach episode 6, we have already fell in love with these poor souls and started to understand each of them and sympathize with them. The episode 6 titled Two Storms is a delight to watch. Presented as a one long shot, the almost an hour long episode only have four or five cuts in them. Set in the backdrop of two nights of storm, one in the past and other in the present, this episode let us enter the psyche of these characters who is in mourning and slowly unraveling the mystery. The following episodes are somewhat streamlined in which we learn what happened to this family in that haunted house. Once you commit and watch at least the first four episodes, I am convinced that you won't miss the rest and most likely watch all the other episodes in one sitting. The Haunting of Hill House from The Haunting of Hill House is also different from those we have seen in other mainstream media. There are ghosts in the house, but they don't act the way we usually see them in other movies or shows. This is more like a curse. The curse that will follow the residents of the house until the house devours their souls. The deepest desires of a person is used to trap them within the walls for all eternity. There is a time factor to these hauntings, which if you haven't watched the show yet, I'm not going to spoil it here. It's pretty good, trust me. But the show isn't without its problems. To me, it was the ending. I still have questions on how they decided to end the show. But that's just me. The allegories to mental illness and family issues are ingeniously incorporated into the series. There are many other videos discussing this particular thing by more capable people than me, so I urge you to watch those videos if you're interested. The technical aspects are also incredible. The aforementioned Two Storms episode itself is a marvel. I had to watch it twice when I watched it for the first time. The second viewing was just to adore what they were able to achieve 
with the camera and set design. The music is hauntingly beautiful. Even though most of the scenes are without any background scores which elevates the tension to a new level, whenever the music is used, it is perfect. When I said this is unlike any other modern horror movies, I didn't mean that it's devoid of those loud moments and jump scares, but these moments are earned. Most of the time, we see what happens only when the character does. This makes the scenes that much more tense because we care what's going to happen to these people. The cast has done an amazing job, especially the child actors. And I must say the casting of the series is spot on. Even when we alternate between past and present, we can easily see which character is which, mainly because of the uncanny similarities between the child actors and their respective adult ones. To conclude, all I have to say is this. This is not your typical haunted house horror show. But if you want to be genuinely scared, this series is for you. Just be patient with it. It delivers. Thank you for watching.